Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Coach, man. I'm going to give you all an opportunity to come into the live feed. Man, I haven't done a Q&A uh, here on IG, but I'm excited about it. I think I'm going to start doing this a little bit more now that I see people can add people. So if you want to um, talk to me or ask a question, man, feel free um, to come on in. Feel free uh, to request, I guess, request to join and ask whatever questions you have. I love to serve you all today. I just got off YouTube. Just got off YouTube, did a live Q&A real good, and I talked about how to, how, how to date the right way. I talked about how to quit a job. I talked about how to move on from a breakup. So a lot of good Q&A <clears throat> over there. Also talked about how to deal with controlling parents. So make sure you check out that video on YouTube. Uh, my wife's in the building. I want to make sure I wave to her. So if there's anyone... Oh, I think I got a request. I'm going to bring in a child of God. I think he requested me. I hope I didn't request him on accident. But let me see if he has a question. So if you want to be part of the Q&A, uh, make sure y'all jump on in. I would love to answer your questions. Hello. What's, what's good, yeah, man? This is, yeah, this is Wesley from Ghana. Hey, from Ghana, thank you for watching, family. How you doing, man? By the grace of God, I was sitting watching one of your videos. Uh-huh. You said? Yeah, and I've learned a lot. I mean, it's so deep and it's so deep. God gets the glory, fam. He gets all the glory. I'm grateful to have your life. I'm grateful. I'm telling you, bro, it's, it's humbling. God definitely gets the glory, family, man. Thank you for, for, for hopping on my first IG Live, bro. Wow, 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 wow. I'm grateful. Thanks very much. You walk, do you have any questions or anything? Anything you want, want to chop it up? Yeah, actually, actually I sent a mail to you yesterday just to appreciate what you are doing on YouTube. Oh, man, I appreciate you. Make, make sure you send me another message so I can make sure I get back to you. I get so many a day. And um, so, man, thank okay. you. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you for your support, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. All right, family. Take care. Sure. All right, who's next? Anyone else got a question about anything? Oh, so many people came in. Let me see who all was talking to me. Hey, Mr. Wesley G, I think I just came talk to you. Autumn, what's up, girl? How's school? You doing all right, girl? Uh, uh, some, uh, please forgive me. My screen's so small. Hey, hey, girl. Hey, y'all. Anybody else want to request, want to jump in? Or if you just want to type your question, and I know some of y'all like, man, I don't want to show my face, Mr. Ezzy. Some people call me Coach Ezzy. Some call me Mr. Ezzy. Some people call me Minister Ezzy. But if you want to talk to me and you want to jump on my live, come on, jump on in. Let me see if there's any questions down here. I'm waving at everybody. This, I'm getting new. I'm trying to implement some other kind of, um, trying to implement some other things into my repertoire in regards to helping people. Uh, hey, hey. What's up, fam? I'm going to get back to you, man. I look forward to being on IG with you. Yeah, you're first. I, I'm glad to be. Nobody want to talk to you, boy. But if you want to type your questions, that's cool, too. Let's see. Drew, what's up, family? Good game day, boy. What's up, y'all? Oh, am I waving at people? I don't know. All right, here we go. How do I uh uh pin comment? No? The... Oh, did I? Lord, you know, you see, I feel like an old person now. I lost it, man. I lost my dude's question. Oh, man. Oh, here it is. Lord have mercy. Unpin comment. <clears throat> Give me one second, y'all. Oh, we got a request. Come on in the room. Come on in, Don. I'd love to answer your question or talk to you however you want to vibe out with the kid. Hey, girl. Hey, how you doing? Good. How you doing? Oh, as well. You doing all right? I am. How what? You doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Coach doing all right. What you got on your heart today? What, what you got? What you got? What question you got? Or whatever. What you got on your heart? So what stops a guy from pursuing a woman if... um? If, like, you know, the signals have been there mm -hmm. and he just never comes around, what stops him? Uh, it could be a lot of different things that stops a man. Some, the number one thing that I would think that would stop a man is a woman's standards. If a woman's standards are too high for him to climb and he don't have the ability to climb that high, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna go his own way. Um, it could be attitude. It could be a lot of different things. But I tell you one thing, a good man won't leave without communication. A good man just won't flee without, if the man is bold enough to pursue you, he should be bold enough to tell you why his pursuit stopped. 
You know, a man a man doesn't start a thing and not finishing it. If he realizes he's unable to finish it or he realizes this is just not it for him, he should at least communicate with you and say, you know what, you know what, what I at the in the beginning I thought this was it, but right now this is the reason why I need to go my way. But if he just disappears, then he's a ghost and he might got some ghost in him. If he's willing to ghost you, he might got some ghost in him. And you don't want no man that got some demon infestations. Right. But there could be a lot of reasons. It could be standards. It could be attitude. It could be a lot of different things. But I promise you, a good man just won't leave without communicating because he knows he initiated. And he will at least, you know, just say, hey, this is just not good for me right now. He may not give you all the reasons, but he'll at least give you the closure that you need. That's what I would think. That's how I would handle it. I'm not saying everybody handles it that standard, but I think that's the right way to do it. Right. So if you if a man is if a man leaves. Uh, uh, and doesn't want to let the woman know, then that man is not a leader, and that's not a man you want to lead you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what if he what if he does tell you? Well, well, you are you already answered it. Thank you, I appreciate it. He tells you, then take the criticism, take whatever whatever is gold into his criticism or whatever is worth. I won't say criticism, but take his reasons and 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 go about your life. And that's why you got to make sure God is your life so that you won't lose a piece of your life and people who are like right. and people who can care less about uh, being honorable with yours. Right. Okay. All right. Appreciate, appreciate you, your help. Listen, y'all going to get me doing these IG lives all the time, man. Yeah, you should stay. Or you should come back. I, I sure will. You have a blessed night now. Thank you. You, you too. take care. All right. All right, I think I'm gonna start doing these lives, man. I got another question, I think. See, IG was different back when it was. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> got a question right here. Uh, two call, look at IG. IG got all these tools and whatnot. All right. <clears throat> IG, oh, not IG. Two Cold Neely says, what are some red flags to watch when meeting new people? Um, number one, you got to watch how they treat people they cannot benefit from. That's that's something you need to watch. Watch how they treat people they cannot benefit from. Because right now they're benefiting from you, so you feel like you're being treated well. But the moment that they feel like the well has run dry and they stop treating you well, you, you would have already had at least some level of insight because how they didn't treat other people right. So number one red flag you should see, not number one, the number one red flag is how committed they are to God. Because, because the Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Beginning of wisdom beginning of wisdom if that young man or woman is not willing to reverence god's word how would they walk in wisdom with you right so you always got to assess their reverential not their religiosity we're talking about their genuine reverence of god genuine reverence is god is proven when he wants to reach after something and when she wants to reach out to something and she knows hey i love god more than i desire this from you x y and z so check their level of reverence for god because that will show you the level of their wisdom number two check how they treat people people they cannot benefit from. I said that. Number three, observe how they respond at their highest and their lows. So when they're very upset, how do they respond? Are they physically aggressive, verbally abusive, or when they're extremely excited? Do they just up and leave and chase a new thing because they got more money now? Um, never build up when you don't, don't build up, you should build with. Ooh. God is the one that's supposed to build up a man or build up a woman. The unfortunate thing, people are trying to build up other people when that person is supposed to have already been built by God, BBG, built by God, so that y'all now can build with each other, right? So another red flag is they're, they're too, um, um, they're too, what's the word, too clingy. They, they need you to complete them. Uh, um, God, com we are completed in Jesus. Jesus is who completes us so that we're not able to compliment someone else. Other red flags is their language. The Bible says you know them by their fruit. Also, uh, check their, their understanding of doctrinal truths uh, and all those kind of things. So there's a lot of red flags. I did a lot of videos. Just type in red flags, Joshua Ezzi on YouTube, and you'll see a ton of them. But those right there are some top, woo, 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 alarm going off type of red flags you should look out for. Hope that helped. Great questions, y'all. Anybody else want to join me on the live? Everybody else shot? It's cool. I understand. Uh, let's see. Uh, where did I leave somebody? Now, um, I'm trying to scroll up to the questions up top. Uh, who's that gentleman or lady whose um, question I tried to pin, but then I lost them? I want to make sure. All right, here we go. What convinced you about who to marry, coach? What convinced me? God's confirmation. 
I mean, God gave me overwhelming confirmation about my wife, overwhelming confirmation. And it was more purpose confirmations. And 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 it was God confirmed in such a way where I knew it was him. That's why you gotta be familiar with him so that you'll know who, <clears throat> who he's trying to um, connect you with. <clears throat> if you're not familiar with God the person, how will you be familiar with, with, with what he is doing, right? So what convinced me about my wife was that she was long, that she was gentle. She was long suffering. Um, she 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 just connected, man. I mean, it was she just connected. And the number one thing that I saw in her is that she was a fighter. She didn't she didn't just quit. She didn't quit on me, especially dealing with someone that struggled with abandonment early on. She just fought with me. And, and you know something is for you from God if it's willing to fight with you, right? So that was the biggest thing that I was like, yo, this is a keeper here, man, because she's a fighter, and, and she she's not a quitter. You know what I'm saying? So. But God's confirmations, man, over and over again, um, really convinced me. And you need God's confirmation so that when times get tough between you and your spouse, see, God continuously confirms. God just doesn't confirm because by default, God's confirmation spawns confirmation. What I mean by that, it's not God pushing a button confirming because he needs, he needs confirmation. No, it just naturally spawns. Because every day or every so often that comfort, the initial confirmation is evident in your wife, evident in your husband, and it reminds you. And reminders are confirmations. And you need that throughout the throughout the um, a, a span of your life. So you'll be like, wow, this is the wife God gave me. This is the husband God gave me. So that when so when the enemy tries to creep arguments in, you're constantly reminded this is who God has for you. So you won't have that exit up and leave type of thing. Let's see who else. We got somebody else that want to join in. Come on in the room. I got time for maybe two, two or three more questions. I'm out. I'm gonna start doing these IG lives a little bit more often. Let me let's get Ari Ari in the building. All right, it was connected. Now here we go. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Coach Josh, how you doing? What's what? You doing all right? Yes, sir. I have been a fan of your ministry for a while now, and you are. Uh, you, you're a real man of God. God no cat. And I really appreciate what you do. Yes, man. Um, what you got I got two questions. Sure, um, sure. It's like nobody was like hopping into the question life. Uh, my first question, I can like just really be into myself, but I don't know. I can't think about what the other young lady said. Um, okay. There's a gentleman at my church. I feel like he's interested in me. I okay. feel like he approaches me sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um like I mean, I remember like one day after like service, we had choir rehearsal. He was he came up to my car when I was backing up, and he was like, "Don't you think this is such a cute cup that I have?" And it's like eight thirty at night, and we like starting a conversation about a cup. And so I was like, "Well, let me take it." And I drove off with it, but I came back. Uh, and it's just like some like small like playful inter playful interactions, but I don't. I guess for me, I kind of wonder: Is he gonna take that next step and? I'm always trying to just be like friendly and you know, I'm I'm not going to be rude or turn him off. I've had positive interactions with his mother and his father in the church and things like that. But um, I just wonder, and I yeah. guess <clears throat> part of me thinks like, should I do more? But the other part of me is like mm -hmm. that relationship of him. He's our music director and I'm in the choir. It's so yeah. important to me. Like I don't need to mess up no situations. If it happens fluidly, let it happen. But it just kind of makes me wonder. But I don't know. If wonder, you start wondering. So you never want to wonder. Uh, wonder leaves you in a place of what if, right? So what I would, mm -hmm. what I would in this situation is realizing that I got to maintain and sustain my focus on what God has called me to do. Listen, a, a lions don't play with gazelles when they hunting them. Lions don't play with their with what they hunting. When, when a man is hunting, oh, you gonna know. A gazelle know when a lion is chasing him. See what I'm saying? You'll know when a man is pursuing you. It will be very clear. And if it's not clear, then he could be clearly playing games. Okay. Um, great answer. I have and one other question. Sure thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. I called this from a video you did a few years ago, and I don't I want to get into that space, but um you okay. said that you kind of do these cleansings. You mm -hmm. said like you identify time in a week where you just wanted to do this cleanse and you just kind of put this energy just for you and God, just so you can just kind of go through, scan, purge, just do yep. that internal filtering. And I'd like to take some notes 
on what does that, what, what, I guess, pr practically, what yeah. does that look like, time of day, uh, yeah. maybe scriptural reference, are we listening to music or quietness or just kind of, let me get my notebook. No problem. So basically, you have to understand that <clears throat> just like in a relationship, seasons kind of alters systems. Seasons will alter systems. What I mean by that, like right now, um, before um, before family involvement, my systems were I spent time with God Friday sundown to about Saturday. So that Friday evening to Sunday was my time of refreshing. Um, driving to work, driving home from work was a moment of refreshing. That's when I got a lot of good worship in. I played my worship music on the way to work and I worship I work God. I used to pray in tongues. But now when my nephew have games and stuff like that, that time got consumed. So now I'm in, so when I enter into a new season, I have to adjust my systems because remember, your relationship with God should never surround your life. Your life should surround your relationship with God. So when, uh, when things uh, interfere with a previous season system, that's when you say, okay, I'm going to stop everything, assess where I'm at, and make sure I don't lose God in this new season, right? And so practically, it boils down to the nature of your day, the nature of your life. So if you're more of an evening person, so maybe you should say, okay, these certain evenings is when I'm going to set aside a time exclusively with God, right? Or if it's morning. So what you do is, if it's mornings, like my goal for this new season of my life, and I'm working on that, is to be in bed by 9 o'clock, 9.30, right? To be up by 5. Or my goal, because sometimes I serve at church, so sometimes I don't get home late. So my goal is to get in bed at a certain time where I can get up at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning and give God that hour and change where daily I'm doing that, right? But I talked about in the video, I think, I said how um, there's spending time with God to ensure that you tap into his presence so that you can really begin to see uh, why he wants you to rejoice and be glad in that day that he made new for you. And there's periods in the week where you're just like, when I'm weak or when I feel like I need to be rejuvenated, that you say, okay, Saturday mornings at this time, I vibe with God. Now that vibe with God is can be based upon what, what, what people say tickle your fancy but it could be just simply with um you know what i'm going to maybe you a worshiper in the beginning maybe you read the word in the beginning maybe you a waiter in the beginning where you just sit there in silence it all boils down to how you like to engage with god like when i have children one child might like basketball another child might like softball but I'm not going to engage with my daughter who likes softball with a basketball. I'm going to engage her the way she loves to be engaged and saying, well, God, God is not saying this is a, there's a system that you have to engage me on. He just says, make sure you worship me in spirit and truth. He didn't say worship X, Y, and Z. He says, make sure when you do worship me, it's in spirit and it's truth, meaning it's authentic, it's genuine and uninterrupted. Mm uninterrupted which means if you got to put your phone in the car sometimes having a phone in the bathroom is a distraction sometimes you got to put your phone in the car pull unplug the wi-fi wrap the cord around it put it in the car do whatever it takes to make sure no one can get to you because if god wants them to get to you he'll have them come find you but god wants those uninterrupted moments with him so that so that we won't be disrupted in our days right so practically you have to ask yourself am i a worshiper so that means get you a good worship playlist are you a word person first meaning that i maybe um like i do i do a proverb a day a gospel a month that's just my basic regimen from there i i spawn into romans or corinthians now i'm in the peters right now you know what i'm saying i was in the timothy's last week so that's the leadership of the reading of god now if you are spending time with god and you're a word person first always open up your bible and say holy spirit read this to me when i worked at elementary school the kids always wanted me to read to them and i used to be like girl you can read young man you can read on this i know i can read Mr. says don't try me i know i can read i just want to read with you so when you go to the Holy Spirit, say, Holy Spirit, I want to read with you. And then the word will come alive, which will then cause the word to be that two-way shore that separates spirit and soul and be able to really clean up those areas in your life, right? That's where worshiping the spirit and truth is important. But if you're a worshiper person, get your, get your, get your playlist. And then 
whatever God vibes with you with or you vibe with him with, that would be the thing that opens you up to how the Holy Spirit will lead you in that one-on-one -on -one time with him. So me, I'm a word person. I get in my word, I sit in quiet, I just start reading, the Holy Spirit will lead me from there. I can't even get past three verses sometimes without the Holy Spirit be like, sit there, Josh. The next thing I know, he may say, here's a book I did. Here's a card game. I, like, it's just, it becomes alive because I started there with him. If you're a worshiper, God may lead that worship music into, get into a place of, of to reading your word, but it will kind of branch off based upon how the Holy Spirit leads you. But it's hard to have that intimate time with God if there's no fellowship with his spirit that will kind of help guide you in those incubating work moments with him where you then begin to have that cleansing. Because sometimes when you go with the word first, the Holy Spirit said, go read this. And you'd be like, wow, God, I repent for that. The word now revealed to me the area of my life to repent from. And repentance now has opened the door for you to truly rejoice without the the, the 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 ropes and the ties of condemnation so so it just depends on how god leads you in that moment but it's cool because you can actually enjoy how you vibe with god you know so i hope that answers your question but practically um cleansing is just that moment where you just say god it was a long week yeah renew me that's why the Bible says Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Now, Christ has became our Sabbath. He has became our rest, but that didn't get rid of, I'm not talking about exclusively Saturday, but it didn't get away. It, it, it didn't eliminate God's creation of rest for us. Right. How, that's why you, if you don't take Sabbath, if you don't, basically what I'm saying, if you don't take a day of rest, you're going to be forced to take days of rest. And sometimes it won't be by the beach. It won't be in a mountain, it'll be in a hospital. Mm. And you, you, so you talk some. A priority. Okay. Last thing I'm going to say, I, I don't want to yep. be like a hog. I don't want to be a hog, but thank you. Yes, yeah, really you good. Um, I, like one of my prayers, or just one of the things I find myself like saying over the past couple of months, it's like, Lord, show me how to worship you. So when you talked about like this, uh, the prayer, uh, the, uh, the scripture person, or the word person versus like uh, initiating in the prayer. Like sometimes like I'll hear a song, like I'll just hear like a gospel song. And yep. it's like these scriptures would just start like flooding, yep. like yep. I hit my mind. And yep. like there's some that I might know, some that I might know fragments of. And then when I do a deep dive into it, it's like tapping into, you know, just things I need to just kind of just lay before, um, lay before God and just identify as like strongholds or keystone prayers or just things to really just focus on. And so I guess I might be like a worship person. And then yeah. he kind of like directs me to that space. I, I think God is, God tailors our entry points. I call them entry points because it's entry, like an entry to the presence. Now, I want to make sure this is very clear for people that say, well, we're always in God's presence. The Bible is true. The Bible says in him that we live, move, and have our being so we are in his presence right but if but just like a cell phone i always give this analogy if my cell phone where is it oh it's right there in front of me <laughs> yeah. if my cell phone payment is not paid am i tapped into the network mm. so the network doesn't leave because my phone ain't paid the network is still there but if i embrace the payment that jesus paid i have unlimited access to the network now i'm tapped in I'm not just in his presence. I'm tapped into his presence. It's a different world now. Because now you're seeing things in a clear way. So sometimes the entry points to us breaking through and out of this world's uh, 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 chaos and into uh, um, God himself is simply focused. It's simply just getting into the entry point. And I think people who are more wordy, I wouldn't even say they're more brain dominant. The word might be the entry point. People who are more jovial and I wouldn't say emotional, but heart dominant, maybe worship is their entry point. But or it could be both. But but there's moments when a worship song would get me on my face. You know what I'm saying? But I get more on my face from what I read versus more than I hear. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. Like so like like the music or the song can be the entry point, but it's like the word. See, the, the, but when I see that word, Ooh. like I can just be reading, and I'm just like, I just start crying. I know the word. The uh, word five is active. 
Oh my gosh. All right, coach. I don't know how to hang this thing up. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you. Bless now. You too, sir. Oh yeah. I hope y'all got something from that. That was good stuff. Let me see who else. Oh, oh we got someone else. Is that my wife calling me? Did you call me? Hey, did you call me? Oh, oh, she called. Because I'll be off this live right now. She called me. It is what it is. I got somebody else waiting. Oh, this is fun. I'm not, I got to stop, though, pretty soon. Because this going to get addicting. We're going to get uh, Duanita. I hope I didn't say your name wrong. And then I'm going to answer these little, the little, uh, little icon questions. Oh, you're back. Yes, I'm back. Thank you. Yeah, what you got? So, um, do you believe that um, I'm thinking about the word strive? Okay. And do you feel that believers should strive to not be perfect, but should you know should strive after you know doing the right thing, or or should or should they just be? I think I think this is what I would say in the scriptural is is more so uh, pressing towards to the pressing towards the mark of the high calling. Um, believers are supposed to press, not stress. Stress is what I'm straining to be, but stressing means it's in my works. I'm stressing to be. Pressing means I'm I'm compelled to be. I'm 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 pursuing. The, the, the version God has designed me to be. Now, strive for perfection is unattainable. Striving for progress. So I celebrate progress. I celebrate how far God has brought me from versus how far I have to go. That is what will give you the fuel to go forward is when you are more thankful of where he's brought you from than how far you got to go. When you look at how far you got to go, condemnation seeps in, uh, insecurities creep up but if you look back and you say this Ooh. is where God has brought me from oh it gives you the, the energy you need for the next couple of miles the next five miles or the next two or three years and so perfection we're not supposed to pursue that Christ took that for us and that's what makes it a joy to that's be a believer. now I get to enjoy his perfect work in me not the perfect work he did for me now his perfect work is now perfecting me and now I'm pressing because I know the more I become Christ-like, the more, the better my wife, the better my marriage, the better everything because of the perfect work that was done for me so that the perfect work can now work in me so that I can be the best person I need to be for the people I am around. Yeah. So the word press is the better, is the better word. Press. Just press. press. I'm pressing. That means, that means I'm compelled. I, like, like when someone really wants to be around somebody, they're going to press in. Get out my way. I, I, like the one with the issue of blood, like a, a lack of blood means weakness. You're not strong. Iron, the weak blood affects the muscles. That means she pressed because she knew if I get close. But the thing about pressing is not getting close to Jesus. It's pressing to be to be um, a, pr a presentation of him wherever I got to go. So I'm pressing to be a better husband. I'm pressing to be a better man because I know the more I press into being who I need to be in Christ, then the more I would be an asset to those around me. What are, um, really quickly, what are some tools to um, to use when people try you? Listen. So you press in towards Jesus and you want to, you oh, know, you get um, represent Christ and all of that. So Perfect. Number one thing that you have to do is you have to, before these things occur, you got to program your mind to understand the difference. And what I mean by that, so when someone has that much time to try you, that means they don't know who they are. So two people arguing, two people arguing from a distance, both look like fools. So a fool engages with someone who's already foolish themselves. So you have to preset your mind to know, first off, I don't want to lose my testimony. I don't want to give no one any power over me to make me more than who I am in Christ, right? I don't want nobody to bring out the old Josh. I don't want nobody to bring it out. So therefore, I have to realize that people who try to do that are either 
are either deep in their insecurities or they're demonically oppressed. And do I war with demons unnecessarily? No. So when your mind is set on that, you will then begin to recognize when someone's trying to try you and be used demonically or being used through the insecurities to get you off your focus. Mm -hmm. So your why has to always be bigger than what or who is trying to take your attention away. So that has to be a mindset first because when the mind is set in regards to, you know, it's a waste of my time. I got better things to do. Or if they do try you, you and you're heated in the moment always walk away i don't care if they call you a punk i don't care if they call you your name you walk away <clears throat> got it all right my friend you take care of yourself now all right thank you you're so welcome all right oh boy who else well I, I got time for maybe two more now let me see who's coming in right now I hope these things say. Please say this live, bro. I, I hope I, I don't even know how to say the live. Fam. One second. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Hello. I think. Hey, how's it going? It's going. How you doing? I'm good. I just clocked out of work. Um, my question would. Your 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 uh, volume's gone. Back there we go. Could you repeat your oh. question again? You went out for a little bit. Yeah. Um, so my request, my question for you would be in regards to single parents and dating. Um, what would be like the proper? Uh, let's see how it word this. So I'm a single parent. I don't really feel that I should like waste my time with hanging out with the opposite sex if it's not going anywhere. Or, like, if mm -hmm. it's not established in the beginning, do you think that that's an yeah. appropriate, like, outlook on that? Say it one more time for me so I can... Sorry. Um, yeah, so, like, um, I'm a single parent, and I feel that, uh -huh. like, I wouldn't want to waste my time on something that isn't intentional. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious, like, what is the right approach to go about that? Like, if if somebody from church is like, hey, let's hang out, like, is that appropriate? Like, I want to, is it wrong of me to be like, what are your intentions? Like, oh, no, 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 no job hires, no one, no job gives an unhired person benefits before they first meet the requirements, right? You have the right to read their resume. And the Bible, the Bible's way of reading resume is reading fruit. And the ultimate way to have, in, to have, uh, they say hindsight is twenty twenty. I say insight is twenty twenty. Right now with the Holy Spirit, you have twenty twenty insight to everything you need to know. Mm -hmm. uh, which means that even if someone presents themselves and the external fruit look good, because even fake apples look real, right? Mm -hmm. Even fake fruit look real. So what I would do is I would, I wouldn't say play hard to get, but you should be hard to get. But, and then, too, it, it, like, I'm just curious, like, I feel like I'm not at the age where I want to be your friend first. Gotcha. Is that, like, you know, is that, like, wrong of me to think? Like, I have a kid. Like, if I, if you're asking to hang out and it's just friends, like, I have to get a sitter. Like, I have to think about all this stuff. Like, I, mean, yeah. I don't want to do that for somebody who's going to be my friend. And let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. The time you use waiting on God. Mm hmm will be worth more than your time spending that time dating people. Exactly. So what I would say is you, right now you have to put a value on you, a value of your time. Because, because the man that God has for you is going to have the bandwidth to handle you and your child, right? Mm -hmm. So God knows you don't have time to play games, and God doesn't play games. So God is not going to interrupt your life uh, or interrupt your life, first off, if you know that you're not ready. And first off, is your child ready? So God is not just going to think about your relational needs. He's going to think mm -hmm. about the relation, relationship or relational needs of your child. Because now you're bringing in another man into the home. And that it has to be God's right time so that that young child of yours can be able to, uh, so that man will be able to um, help grow the family, even if that's not his child, right? And so- mm -hmm mindset should always be that 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 is going to be me and jesus 
me and my child, me and my purpose. And mm -hmm. when God sees fit, that's what's good about singleness. You get the opportunity to get to know God and how he wants to get to know you. Mm -hmm. in your so that yeah. when you do meet somebody, you will see the residue of your father on him. You will be like, oh, you, you, you of God, because I know what, I know what being of God is, right? So mm -hmm. the mindset that you have is correct. You don't want to um, waste your time with someone that just want to use your time. You got to, time is money. Time is mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, you spell life, you spell time, L-I-F-E. Mm -hmm. And so what I would do is I wouldn't, don't get discouraged in the singleness. <clears throat> love on your child, love on you, allow God's love to work in you. And at the right time, that man's going to come. But if a man comes to you at church talking about let's hang out and you know, like this guy just smells like he's fresh in the Christianity or on the outside playing with him, uh -huh. you then it's... It's just not it. So what I would do mm -hmm. is don't get discouraged because you're going to attract light attracts flies too. So you're mm -hmm. going to attract just based upon whatever, right? Yeah. But you also got to know the value of your time, the value of your life. And if you do find yourself in a season where you feel sad and you feel like you're missing someone, then that's when you got to up that time with God and kind of really get engrenched in, in, in mm -hmm. so that you won't find yourself susceptible for the new devil in a new suit. Mm -hmm. And what would like what would a good like like a man of God? What would that look like, or what would it sound like if they were to approach you and like want to date you? What would that sound like, or what would that look like? It could be. It could be. I don't want. I don't want to give a one, two, three because God, mm -hmm. God is creative, mm -hmm. right? But the Bible always clear about fruit. It's clear about fruit. It's clear about fruit. Um, so if 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 God, which I know He loves you, He's going to at least give you the opportunity to examine fruit. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, two, He He will have always. Now, if God does speak to you about a man, don't tell that man. You mm -hmm. can't tell because sometimes God may show you who your man is, and you just have to just chill on it and go about. It. Don't even don't. Ooh, okay, God, that's cool if it works. And you keep going on with God, right? Mm -hmm. But what it will sound like if a man is a man of God pursuing, because you got to be careful. Just because he's a man of God, he's legitimately a man of God, may not mm -hmm. be no man of God, right? Mm -hmm. But the one God has for you, well, I think you would just know. And that sounds like when I first <laughs> met my wife, I didn't clearly articulate, I just knew in the depths of my soul, this is it. Mm -hmm. And then over time, confirmation really amplified, no, this it is different than the indigestion you had with other girls. You know what I'm saying? Like, this mm -hmm. is it. I really do believe you will know. But how will you know your person if you don't know the person of God? When you begin to get to know him, you know what's of him for you. It sounds Christianese, it sounds spiritual, but it is what... Oh, I said Christianese. That's funny. I never heard that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I hope. Okay. That, and, no, uh, that helped. Thank you. I appreciate it, and I enjoy watching you. So, thank you so much for all your videos. God gets the glory. I'm glad it's been a benefit to you. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks. Y'all be blessed. Okay. <laughs> well, y'all, it's getting late, and uh, Coach got to go. I got a wife. <laughs> I got to go. But I hope this video was a blessing. I, 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 man, look, man, I plan on doing this some more. So make sure y'all check out the links in my uh, Instagram bio page. There's uh, my website, a uh, place where you can get books, a place you get card games. Also join my Patreon uh, for doers only, people who want to take their purpose to the next level, people who want to discover, develop, and distribute their art form and purpose. Check out that uh, Patreon if you want coaching. It's for coaching. Uh, uh, so if you want access to coaching and get your purpose and your business and your ministry and your books and your card games, whatever it is off the ground, or just discover your purpose, make sure you check the links in my bio um, to join my Patreon. I got an $8 uh, uh, tier, a $25 tier, a $35 tier, a $50 tier. $50 tier, you get access to my merch. $125, you get access to one-on-one -on -one culture with me. But during this season, it's going to be a little bit more tight-knit, so I don't really think I'll have more opportunities to really do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching. Maybe I'll start coaching people that I'm, that I'm already coaching. But, uh, but this will get you some access to some, some Zoom calls with me, an exclusive podcast on purpose, all that good stuff. Oh, somebody, know? yeah, I got a Patreon. Check it out. I would love to have you a part of it. I got to go. And can someone tell me how I get off this Instagram and don't delete it? So if I hit this, do I hit the X? 
do I hit the X? Do I hit the X or do I hit something else so it won't delete? Thank you for signing up, Ari. I'd love to have you in the Patreon. I hit the X, right? I think someone told me. Can someone let me know that's in, in, in the live right now? So if I hit the X, when you end it, it will give you the option. So if I press the X, fam, if I, I press. Okay. Love y'all. i see y'all next time. Peace. I'm about to hit the X. Are you sure you want to end your end now?